The Virginia Beach Coastal Storm Risk Management Feasibility Study was formally initiated in July 2021 with the signing of a feasibility cost share agreement between the Corps and the City of Virginia Beach. The authorization for the study is Section 1201 of the America's Water Infrastructure Act of 2018. The non-federal sponsor is the City of Virginia Beach. The purpose of this study is to investigate long-term solutions to reduce potential damage and risk to human life, health, and safety caused by coastal storms in the City of Virginia Beach. The study is needed because the City of Virginia Beach is extremely vulnerable to flooding from a coastal storm surge and risk levels and vulnerability are expected to increase as a result of future sea level change. The Corps has a multi-step planning process with numerous key milestones occurring throughout the study. This begins with scoping and defining the planning strategy in early stages, followed by the development of alternatives and subsequent impact analysis, the identification of the tentatively selected plan, followed by optimization and refinement of the tentatively selected plan into a recommended plan. The culmination of the planning process is the selection of the recommended plan and the approval of the plan with the signing of a chief's report. Right now, we are currently in the scoping phase of the study. There will be additional opportunities in the future for the public to participate and comment. To put this into a broader perspective, if the feasibility study phase results in a plan for construction and is approved with the signing of the chief's report, the project must be authorized and funded by Congress and a project partnership agreement executed with the non-federal sponsor before it enters the pre-construction engineering and design phase. Our team has identified the problems, opportunities, objectives, and constraints as part of the core planning process. The problems include Critical infrastructure along with transportation and evacuation routes and utilities are all at risk to the effects of coastal storms. Commercial and residential structures are damaged by coastal storms. The opportunities identified for this study include reducing economic impacts from coastal storms and coastal flooding, reducing the risks to human life, health, and safety, improving the resilience of the city of Virginia Beach to the impacts of coastal storms and flooding, utilizing natural and nature-based features and or restoration of the natural coastal system of defenses to reduce impacts from coastal storms, improving floodplain management, reducing the impacts coastal storms have on the Department of Defense facilities in the study area, and improving recreational opportunities. The objectives of the study include reducing economic impacts from coastal storms and coastal flooding to development within the city of Virginia Beach for the 50 year analysis period, reducing the coastal storm risk to human life, health and safety to the population in the city of Virginia Beach over the 50 year analysis period and minimizing effects to sensitive environmental and cultural resources. The constraints of this study include not creating or exacerbating coastal storm impacts and or flooding within and around the study area, including military installations, not creating or exacerbating risk to human life, health, or safety, and not impacting military installations, readiness, and or operations within the study area. As part of the planning process, there are many different considerations that we must take into account during the study. Planning considerations include, but are not limited to, sea level change, public and private shellfish grounds and leases, future development, actions by other agencies or organizations, navigation and port related operations, existing and future environmental conditions, evacuation corridors, U.S. Navy installations and military operations, existing and future projects, flood pathways, environmental justice communities, and protected resources. This study will evaluate different potential measures to reduce coastal storm risk. We will look at structural measures, which are man-made constructed measures that counteract a coastal storm surge event to reduce the flood hazard 
This may include storm surge barriers, flood walls, and levees. Some of the features associated with storm surge barriers may also include flood walls and pump stations. We will also be considering non-structural measures, which are coastal storm risk management measures applied to a structure and or its contents that prevent or provide resistance to damage from flooding. Non-structural measures differ from structural measures in that they focus on reducing the consequences of flooding instead of focusing on reducing the flood hazard. Non-structural coastal storm risk management measures may include elevating residential structures and floodproofing non-residential structures. Dry floodproofing is a non-structural measure that involves making an area watertight so that no water can enter the structure. This can be done with the use of waterproof coatings, impermeable membranes, sealants, and shields or gates applied to doors and windows. Unlike dry floodproofing, wet floodproofing involves allowing water to enter a structure. Wet floodproofing requires structures to be built with materials that are water resistant. As a non-structural measure, a flood warning system often relies upon local stream gauge, rain gauge, and hydrologic computer modeling to determine the impacts of flooding for areas of potential flood risk. A flood warning system, when properly installed and calibrated, is able to identify the amount of time available for residents to implement emergency measures to protect valuables or to evacuate the area during serious flood events. Another potential non-structural measure that may also be considered includes acquisition. Critical infrastructure asset categories that may be included in this study are fire stations, medical facilities, police stations, evacuation centers, wastewater and potable water facilities, and emergency operation centers. Lastly, we will be considering natural and nature-based features as part of this study. Natural and nature-based features work with or restore natural processes with the aim of wave attenuation and storm surge reduction. Some of the natural and nature-based features that we may consider include beach fill, dune enhancement, and breakwater systems, tidal wetland creation and or restoration, and living shorelines, including the potential for incorporation of oyster reef structures as part of living shorelines. We may also look at potential drainage improvements and water storage features as well. To comply with the National Environmental Policy Act or NEPA, we will prepare an integrated feasibility report and NEPA document. Standard NEPA documents include environmental assessments or environmental impact statements. When impacts are not anticipated to be significant, an EA is prepared, and when significant impacts are anticipated, an EIS must be prepared. At this time, we are looking for stakeholder and public input as part of our NEPA process, but it is anticipated that an EIS is highly likely. With that being said, our next steps, which come later in the overall planning process, include publishing a notice of intent to prepare an EIS in the Federal Register. As part of our guidelines, we do not issue notice of intents until closer to the tentatively selected plan milestone. It's important to note that this study will follow core policies and guidelines for consideration of economic, environmental, cultural, and social impacts. The topics that may be evaluated as part of this study are identified on this slide. We have initiated our scoping process and we are looking for comments from the public, agencies, and other stakeholders. The public comment period runs through November 3rd, 2022. Comments may be submitted in writing via mail or email.